It looks like LED time. So we have this RTV here, and has, as you can see, we have the old style halogen lights. Inefficient in many ways. And they kind of kind of look a bit rough. But these things are nice to put lights on because you have three mounting points. And uh, we have the perfect LED light bar to go up there. It's made by a company called Nylite. Come on over and we'll have a look. The box is open. Oh, look at that baby. Wow. Isn't that nice? What grabbed my attention with it was the fact that uh, the company has their own logo on it, which is a nice touch. It's both uh, spot and uh, floodlight. So it's a, uh, a mixed light. And it's gonna look really good up there. This one's 39 inches long. What I like about this is the way it mounts. It's adjustable for the way it mounts up on the RTV. So that was kinda the drawing card for me. It's quite heavy. It's uh, waterproof, uh, water resistance, water, water resistant, and also it's a, uh, it's a well-known company. Uh, if you go to our uh, description in the, in the uh, video, you will see a lot of links that I put there for their uh, website, for their Amazon page, and you'll see a video there of how they abuse these things to try to get them to fail and you'll be very surprised of what these things can take with regards to abuse before they actually do fail. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to start removing the OEM lights and we'll get ready to do the install on the uh, Nylite light bar. So they are removed and as you can see not a minute too soon they're getting bad. Look. See the damage? All in the corner. Yeah. So we have to make up a new bracket because these, of course, was only two lights, so they were supported here. But what I would like to do with this particular light bar, we have enough mounting points. I'll have one here, one here, and one here. And that way it gives it a lot of rigidity. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the iron worker, make up one of these and uh, prime it and paint it and then we'll do the install. Got a trace out. Because uh, it depends on uh, Nihilate's mount before I punch in. Okay. Go over here. I'll cut this off. it up so people at home can see it. grinding just to get any sharp edges off then we have to do a, a bend in it 
Isn't that great? Look, all stainless steel bolts. Yeah, fabulous. Some quality, eh? Really great quality. So we can get by with even the original oh, bolt God. hole pattern. Wow. Isn't that nice? That is nice. So, Nylate really got it figured out, eh? Do. Okay, now we'll go back and uh, I'll punch the other hole, then we have to put that bend in. Yep. Time to bend the bracket. Don't need much. Even that's a bit much. So, just a little adjustment, and we'll be right back. Here we be. Prime and paint installed. So I have the brackets painted, or the middle one we we uh, redid. That's uh, paint prime and painted. We have them back up in place. We're starting to put the mounting bracket up for the light bar now. Uh, if you're wondering, they don't go this way, they go that way because that way the light can adjust down more if you need. Whereas if you put it this way, it can't adjust down. <laughs> mm. So just something to keep in mind. I have the light bar already laid up on top. It's, these are designed for four mounting points, but I'm going to remove one because we only need the three. That's going to be plenty of strength for that light bar. And I'm going to put this up and then we'll start to install the light bar itself. Okay, when you get your light bar placed on top and your brackets folded down, you're going to want to tighten up the main bar that goes along each one here, the three of them. And how you do that is you tip it forward all the way and get your six millimeter Allen key and go in through the back and tighten them in. And then, of course, you have your, your alignment and everything done. Now, with regards to doing the aiming of the light, what you'll have to do then is just tilt it and then tighten up your, your 10 millimeter bolts underneath. And that's how you, how you adjust it. But uh, if you're wondering how to put these on then tighten them after, you just tip the bar ahead and you'll get to the back of the you'll get to the back of the uh, bracket where you can tighten it down with your six millimeter. Nice and solid, clean, very strong. I love the way that they have their, their mounting system and it's very accommodating. You can almost put them, well, you can put them wherever you want, wherever they're needed, so it's, it's great that way. So uh, it's, it's in, technically it's installed, now we have to go and do the wiring part, so we'll touch base on that now shortly. So this is going to be the relay harness switch combo kit. This is sold separate on their site. It's not very expensive, but highly, highly recommended. There's the switch if you choose to use it. You even got light bar inscribed on it. Isn't that neat? It is neat. That's a very nice quality item. Really quality, isn't it? Yeah. And here is the harness. Let's have a look to see here. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with these types of harnesses, I'm going to explain to you what they're used for and why they're used. They're kind of a safety item. So, this is going to hook up to your battery, negative and positive. It has a fuse, a built-in fuse. Okay, that's 25 amp. It has a relay. What is the relay for, you might ask? The relay is for uh, protecting the switch. All the switch do, all the switch does, is command the relay on that allows the power to go up to the light. 
The relay looks after the heat, it looks after the current, it looks after the amperage, it protects the switch. If you hook that light directly up to the switch into power, it's quite possible that eventually you could have a fire, you could have your sw switch burn out, so it's, uh, it's imperative that you use a good harness. That's a very nice harness. I mean, just look at the heat shrink that's on it. Yeah, it's high quality. It's high quality. It, everything is protected. It's got its own wiring harness itself. It's, uh, it's nothing short of impressive. So, kudos to uh, Nylite for that. It's a, it's a nice job. It's probably one of the better ones I have seen. And, of course, we're putting this on our customer's vehicle. So, we wouldn't put anything on his vehicle that we wouldn't put on our own. Exactly. Right? Right. And we've had we've had some stuff here before in regards of LED lighting that I would I refuse to use. Exactly. So got to be good gear. Yeah, so that's the next thing now. So basically negative and positive. Uh, this goes to the the bottom one there goes to the light, the longest one goes to the light. And this one goes to the switch. So we just got to figure out where it goes on the switch. <laughs> Well, folks, don't be intimidated by the wiring, because this is probably the easiest one that I've ever done. Unbelievable. 30 seconds? I was impressed. 30 seconds. Very Come on over and we'll, we'll show them. You take your switch, your switch got numbers on them, and, and uh, keep note, double wire, single wire, double wire, single wire, and white wire right there. Right? Can't get any easier. That's pretty that. simple. When you turn it over, you will see that the light is on. When you turn on switch, it lights up here as well. You can hear the relay. Now, if you want to verify it's working before you uh, before you actually do the install. You can take a test light, you can put it on the ones that go out here to your light bar, and if it lights, it's working. Now that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's incredible. So now we just go ahead and we do the install in the tractor. Well, we got to get some light in here. We're going to use an LED light. Ah, gotta love it. Okay, so where is, where is my light from my light bar? We have to get, it's up here somewhere. There it is. So negative is black, positive is white. Because sometimes with other companies, LEDs have different polarities, so... Make sure, in this case, it's written right on it. Make sure you read the label. As a matter of fact, read everything before you even try to install these things. So our uh, electrical system on this is all back here. So I got a bit of stuff I have to remove to get at it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to remove that stuff, then we'll come back and I'll show you what we have done. Okay, so I'm going through a little bit more trouble here than I really, I really need to. But I've pulled the steering wheel because I want to get the cluster out. I'm going to leave his original switch there now. And I'm going to put uh, this other one right below it. The one from uh, Nylite. And uh, that way everything keeps original. And that way I can still get at it and do my wiring and stuff from here. And uh, I think it's just a better way of doing things. So over to the workbench, I got to cut a slot in that so the switch will go in place. Okay. So what I usually do when it comes to those switches, I'll, uh, I'll make up a template just like this here. So I know it fits. And usually what I'll do when I go to make the template I'll mark it here like this, give it a little tiny bit extra, mark it here like this. And then I'll go in and I'll get the width 
like that and I'll just come on down with the uh, with a, a ruler of some sort and I'll make my my marks that way and then I'll just make it fit like that once I know I got it pretty close I cut it out with a knife and I come over here I lay it in place and that's going to be my template Use a file after just to trim it up nice. Hopefully, it will fit. And nice. Perfect. That's neat and tidy. When you're doing a job and you're using good quality lights and switches, that's how it turns out. Okay, folks. Anybody who's putting these switches in, a little precaution that you can do, you'll see here that I put an electrical strap right here just to keep the harness taut up against, taut up against that because that way if anything happens it won't pull the spades, spade connectors out and then you'd have to take the dash apart just to, to hook them back on. So now that eliminates the possibility of these things accidentally popping out. So test number one. We have all the lights on the dash. Good. Are you ready? Ready. Whoa. Whoa. I just x-rayed you. <laughs> you did, too. Right, eh? Wow. That is incredible. Cool. So basically, that's what the switch looks like now in place. It's kind of nice, eh? It is nice and tidy. And, uh... What I'll do now, you see those white connectors there on the pillar post? They go here? Oh, okay, yes. I'll yes. put some here now and clean this up as well, right? Because this is the harness that goes up to the roof for the uh, the uh, light harness. Okay. Yeah. These are pretty neat things, these are. Aren't they? Yeah. Makes a nice, tidy job. Yeah. Well, it keeps it all from falling down, don't it, you know? It does. Where the rest of it is so nice, just as well to do this nice. It's been X66 a success, huh? Sure has. Cool. Okay, so the next thing you're going to see is uh, I'm going to show you what it was like in the complete darkness with the original lights. And then you're going to see exactly what it's like in the dark with the new light, I think you'll notice a huge difference. Video shows original lighting. Okay, it's dark. Let's see uh, what the new light light is going to look like. Let's turn her on. Big difference from the old to the ultra modern. Good reliable lights. I'm going to put the uh, link to uh, Nylight in our description, video description. So you can click on, I think, Instagram, Amazon, that's their store, Amazon.com, and also Facebook. They have a page on Facebook as well. And check out their video of where they put these through their kind of a torture test. I find it really interesting. I know I did. And uh, if you get a chance to get on any of their pages and that, uh, just say uh, Paul and Kathy sent us. I'm sure they'll get a, a kick out of that. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.